Bob, when everybody goes to the outback, they love to see um, snakes and lizards. What else they like to see when they go out in the desert? The outback, the true outback. Dingoes, Colin. Dingoes. Dingoes. Like a, like a dingo's got my baby. That's the sort of dingo we're talking about. Colin, look, uh, you know, Australia is dingoes in the outback. But we have one particular issue at the moment that's a worry to many, many people that the government are ignoring, I believe they're ignoring, and that is the dingo on Fraser Island. Colin, we, we, we have two, two groups of as close as possible to purebred dingoes in this country. One group is on Fraser Island, been there many thousands of years. The other group is in the Snowy Mountains in Victoria. Well, what's the problem with them, Bob? Well, the problem is we, we have a Fraser Island management plan. Managed by the government? Managed by the government. Well, there's a problem for starters. Well, Colin, the problem I see with the management plan is it was devised by humans for humans. They won't help the animals, Bob? The animals haven't had any or very little consideration at the moment. The government maintain that everything's fine and rosy, but that isn't the case. There is enough evidence to suggest that we should look seriously at this management plan and, uh, and make some alterations to it because the dingoes will disappear. Why are they starving on, on, on an island? There must be food over there. Well, Colin, there always used to be food there. The uh, Fraser Island for many, many years had brumbies on it. So yep. the, um, the, the government in their wisdom decided to remove the brumbies, which they did. So that was one food source that the dingoes no longer had. The other area that the dingoes scavenge is the beach. And you, you must remember that the dingo is really a scavenging animal. He is not a hunting animal. He doesn't do well as a hunting animal. He's a scavenging animal. What would he eat on the beach, Bob? So the beach, uh, dead crabs, dead fish, mollocks, uh, like there's, there's endless food for them on the beach, endless food. And they've hunted there for thousands of years. Because, as you can imagine, they were on the island when the TOs were on the island, the, the true traditional owners had the dingo as their camp dogs. That's what they were, they were scavenging. Now, we, we have taken the food away from the dingoes. And so, if the dingo goes down on the beach now, the authorities hassle them. How do they hassle them, Bob? They hassle them by firing clay pallets at them. At the dogs? At, at the dingoes. So oh, the no dingoes way. are uh, harassed continually and they're ear tagged, Colin. They're ear tagged with these disgusting, disfiguring ear tags that bend their ears over and so affect their senses. So they can no longer hear properly. And as you can imagine, hearing is one of a dingo's finer senses. They can no longer hear. And they tag them with these disgusting ear tags so that they, if a dingo goes down on the beach and annoys a tourist, it can then be destroyed. So uh, how do they destroy them, Bob? Oh, they just shoot them, Colin. Well, surely people on the island um, feed the dingoes. They don't just let them starve, do they? Oh, no, they're, they're actually starving, Colin. If, 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 if anybody witnessed the Jennifer Parkhurst story on Australian Story, they would see what conditions some of these dingoes are in. And I know the government say that the dingoes are in good condition, but I think... I think there is enough evidence to suggest that that we need to take a good hard look at this management plan. It's not working. Are you going to do anything about it in the near future, Bob? Oh, Colin, I work as hard as I can and as many hours in the day as I've got. And and uh, I will be having meetings in the next few days with um, people that are interested in this project. Bob, I don't want to be rude, but you're not a young man. Um, no, it's all right, Colin. I'm not a young man either. I, I hit 59 this month. and. Um, you know, I can see an enormous problem going to the future. We're going to need the, the likes of Peter Bethune with Earth Race Conservation Organisation, those sort of people that are on the ground that actually come and do something. Can you see that those sort of blokes are going to be a benefit to, to highlight all these Australian issues that we've got facing us at the moment? Oh, Colin, look, 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 look these, uh, these sort of people that have this special expertise are really, really important. But, but having said that, let's not forget the ordinary Aussie. The ordinary Aussie's got to get involved. 
and I want I want the young people to get involved because I'm not going to be here very long. And so I want young people to get involved now to take over and to keep pushing this message. Fantastic, Bob. And I don't want you going too quick because you owe me for last night's tea, so... Okay, Colin. I'll Thank you, buddy. I'll Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, mate. <laughs>